a tremendous weekend of college football, particularly that late night slate. That 730 slate last night was absolutely bonkers. Two football games that we expected a lot of fireworks out of, and we certainly got them. Let's start with what I thought was one of the more important football games of the weekend, um, not only from a national perspective, but particularly from an SEC perspective. Got our indications of what the SEC West was ultimately going to be this weekend uh, out there in Tuscaloosa between Bama and LSU. Bama actually uh, obviously comes out on top 42 to 28 in this football game. We expect a lot of fireworks. Like I said, we got them. I think first of all, and first and foremost, we should give credit. Um, we could talk about the defense. We're not going to talk a ton about them. Let's give them credit. Held LSU to 28 points. Held LSU to 28 points. But a lot of that was due to what Alabama was doing offensively and what Alabama was able to do offensively. Um, I, I think a lot of credit goes to Jalen Milrow. He's obviously seeing it much better. 15 of 23, uh, only eight incompletions in this football game. But I think most importantly, didn't have a turnover in this football game. Uh, and, and when you have that uh, in, in a game that you expect a lot of offense, uh, that that is one of those when you're having an expected when you're in an expected shootout, right? When you're 28, 28 at the half, when you're 21, 21 at the half, you know you're you're, you're limited, not only limited possession, but every possession counts. Um, and, and and you almost feel like you have to score every time, uh, that pressure to not turn the football over uh, and, and that ability to not put the ball at risk, when that was something we had questioned about him uh, up until, you know, a, a couple games ago uh, at the quarterback position, hey, God kind of stares it down. God kind of might put it at risk. Dude has turnover where he played. Nah, he, he played a pretty flawless football game. Um you know, at, at the quarterback position, this football team was always nationally national title talented, right? We always knew that the question was always going to be about the quarterback position uh, and, and Tommy Reese's ability to get his legs involved. But the, the, the thing about Milrose performance last night and, and Daniels, especially, I felt like we learned a lot about the quarterback running at the quarterback position without the design run. Like, Hey, I, Milrow's ability to now, hey, we're not going to bounce outside the pocket. As soon as we see crease, we're gone. Like, as soon as we see grass, we're going to go. Because what I noticed about that, that game last night and what I think a lot of people have noticed about Milrow when you watch him, he, he's the fat, not only the fastest, he's the twitchiest football player on the field. When he sticks his foot in the ground and when he decides, I'm going to go, like I'm going to run right now, when he decides that, He's the fastest human on the field, and it's noticeable. Like his twitch and explosive nature is 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 palpable on the TV screen. I couldn't imagine what it looks like and feels like on the field with him. There are people when he makes plays that you can see that they're like st stunned by how how fast he is. Not only that, I felt like he uh, he ran with some force as well Saturday night. Uh, in that football game as well. So, you know, he's he's huge. He's like six two and a half. He's like 230 pounds, and he's extremely fast. Uh, and his, uh, his legs have been the difference maker in the red zone for this football team as well. They pretty much avoided the red zone for a large portion of uh, Saturday night's game as well because of what he was doing with his legs. He had four rushing touchdowns, I believe, in this football game uh, as well. So, that again, you don't even have to really. They did some design run for him, but you don't even have to really like have some massive scheme. He is like his legs run, run standard pass routes, make sure no one's in the middle of the field, okay, and just go. We're going to attack outside the numbers because his arm strength is phenomenal. By the way, the way he holds the football is mind boggling to me. I don't really understand it. He's like, Got his index finger on the nose of the football. I, I, I don't know. I, I would imagine a lot of the time he's nose down, but he throws a tremendous deep ball. There's, there's a lot about him throwing the ball that I don't that I can't really quantify. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me uh, in terms of like mechanics, how he holds the ball. It doesn't matter. It comes out of his hand extremely well, uh, and he throws the deep ball exceptionally well as well. Now, let's flip on to the other side of the football. Uh, can LSU buy a defense? And it doesn't really matter because it's too late now. That was my only thought process. And, and Brian Kelly knows if you listen to his, it was funny. I, they had like these, they have these like little sideline interviews with coaches now in between the quarters. I guess they think it's the NBA, um, but they've had it all year. I, I, I guess they think they can talk. To, these guys are are doing quarter interviews. It's weird um, with sideline reporters. I feel so bad for the sideline reporter because you're getting a coach that's 
in like a critical moment. And he's obviously, he obviously don't want to be talking to you. Like it sucks for that person to be doing those. Um, but anyways, Kelly's sitting there and he's like, man, every possession's like super vital. We basically have to score. Um, man, like they go out the next possession that he puts it on the ground and they fumble and Alabama gets the ball back. But uh, no, it, I, 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 I want to start the LSU analysis with this. I did think it was a targeting. I know we, we get a lot of national folks in here during this uh, hour. Two things. It's leading with the crown of the helmet. It's not what strikes the player. All right. When you lead with the top of your helmet, that's kind of targeting. All right. And the other thing is like when we talk about launching ourselves at, at, at a human, go back and look at the photo I, the, 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 or the video. The definition of launching yourself to me is when you come off the ground and your toes are pointed. Okay. You look like a rocket ship. You look like he was ro- launching himself. Okay. At the quarterback. And the reason he landed on top of the quarterback like he did was because he had launched himself at the quarterback. You see what I'm saying? So I, I thought it was a target, but that, that doesn't really matter anyways because whether or not it was a 15-yard penalty, whether or not Dallas Turner doesn't play the last seven minutes, that wasn't the biggest impactful portion of the game. It, the biggest impact of that play was the fact that Jaden Daniels didn't finish the remainder of the game like himself. Um, and I thought that we were robbed. We were robbed of the last seven and a half minutes because of a football play. Whether or not it was a targeting doesn't matter to me. The result of the play was no more Jaden Daniels for the rest of the football game, and that sucked. That did suck. Um, but here, here's, the, here's the reality. LSU's defense could not get off the field. They couldn't get off the field. It didn't, it didn't really matter. Whether, whether or not they scored with their possessions in the fourth quarter would have made this a, a, a maybe a potentially overtime football game. But the reality is the defense couldn't get off the field. The second half time of possession was absolutely drastically shifted. Um, in the second half uh, of that football game, LSU only had the football for seven minutes. Seven minutes of 30. Seven minutes of 30 minutes, they had the football, or Alabama had it the rest of the time. Uh, the missed field goal drive late in the football game was 10 plays. It took seven and a half minutes off the clock, and, and you knew it was going to be that way. You knew it was going to be that way, that LSU could not get off the field, and that was our analysis coming into the football game. We thought that, hey, LSU's defense is – our offense is great. Bama's defense is great. LSU's offense, our defense, is suspect. Alabama's offense is a B plus, and it looks like they're rounding out to be about an A minus. This was a tremendous, tremendous football game. 318 yards on the ground between both of these quarterbacks. Um, and I think, again, whether or not it was targeting, you took Jaden Daniels off the field, and that's what sucked. That's what sucked for the rest of us uh, in the college viewing world. Uh, so that's now three losses for LSU, and that's kind of that threshold line for the for the uh, the Heisman Trophy, which. <laughs> I guess we can start the discussions about that right now. Um, I, I don't know what you're going to do with the Heisman Trophy. I guess we still got a, a three weeks to decide it and a conference championship weekend to decide this. But, um, I mean, Michael Penix wasn't the reason that they won the football game uh, out there in, in L.A. It was because of the running game and because of USC's future defense. But we will talk about that one right here, right now. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up button, like, subscribe, rate, review, and firing off in the chat, all that good stuff. I know, controversial take right there for Alabama fans. It was targeting, but again, it didn't matter. Targeting or not, Jaden Daniels is off the field. That was the difference uh, in that last seven and a half minutes of that football game. Additionally, on top of that, the turnover, right? Creating the turnover, getting the strip sack, um, and getting the ball back, but also being able to control the ball up 14 points, or I think it was up seven points on your last 14-point scoring drive. So, yeah, there you go right there. Massive, massive win for Alabama. They're in the driver's seat out there in the SEC West. 